Yeah. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Honorable Mayor Ron Shaver. Here. Council Member Dan Marler. Here. Christine Casto. Here. Joe Segura Jr. Here. Clint Anderson. Here. Lisa Northrup. Here. Kevin Lindell. Here. First item of business on the agenda is the council election of a mayor pro tem. That will entail a nomination of one of the seated council members um, or such, and we will go with, if there's more than one, we will ha cast a ballot vote, and that ballot vote will be counted by, I get I'm determining John, mm -hmm. and who else? Well, he'll probably just do it right there, and I'll make sure I'll watch him. You'll keep him on. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I think everyone will be watching John. <laughs> okay. And then he, he can, uh, he'll tally the votes, and then that will be the determination. Okay. Um, with that, I would open the floor for nominations. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to nominate Lisa Northrup. I second. Other nominations? Seeing none. So there's a uh, you you can you can call a vote if you would like, or because there's no one else running, there could be a basically a vote of acclamation because nobody else is running. So it would be up to the mayor to make that declaration of uh, that she's it. If nobody else is nominating or. A interested I will go with presentate or appointment of Lisa Northrup as mayor pro tem for the next term <laughs> next is presentation of the 2016 budget books Miss Kinney Good evening, Mayor and Council. No, she didn't need a forklift. <laughs> Thank you. We went green this year. Literally. <laughs> Looks kind of thick to be considered green to me. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, it, we went green both in color and also it's half the thickness because Ms. Sharon decided she wasn't going to waste as much paper as we normally do and so everything's on two pages. Most everything is. Something in the Romanettes, which she taught me that word. Does anybody know Romanettes? It's I, double I, triple I, IV. Those are Romanettes when they're little like that. No. I didn't know that till I came to work here. <laughs> But anyway, the budget is just as we had approved it, so there, you know, there should be nothing different here than what there was in the budgets that we handed out. And the budget will be available online for anyone um, by January 31st or sooner. It will be online, and so you'll be able to go on there and look at it if you'd like to. And it is on the, the city website under departments, under F, under finance, <laughs> and then under budgets. So well, that's it. Thank you. And there'll be a test next week. Oh yeah. Okay. All here. <laughs> so <clears throat> this basically is a the culminating work of a full year of evaluating 
uh, every department and uh, the needs of the city, looking at initiatives and specific projects. And I want to thank Jeannie and the finance staff as well as everyone else who participated, especially uh, the managers and city council who spent a lot of time looking over these numbers and making sure that they were correct. So thank you very much. And we'll start this process again uh, with uh, the uh, a retreat with council, I think, on March, March 8th. 8th. So um, we'll look forward to meeting with everybody there after staff gets some of their ideas uh, in line, and then we'll get with the council and start it all over again. So we have a shorter season than NASCAR does. <clears throat> so yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, next agenda is presentation of the fire department's annual report, Chief Rasco. Honorable Mayor and City Council, during 2015, we've had 33 members on the fire department. We currently have 30 at this time and we've logged 1,228 and a half hours of training. We've also logged 1,697 hours of auxiliary time. In 2015, we had 188 city calls, which is down from 227 in 2014. We had 204 rural calls, which is up uh, from 185 in 2014. Total calls was 392, which is down from 412. <clears throat> Our city calls totaled 747.25 hours of man, of man hours, and a rural calls totaled 1,419 hours. <clears throat> In our protection area, there was 585 reported controlled burns over the course of the year. Overall, it's been a productive year for the fire department, and we hope to serve the community for 2016 in the same way. I'd like to introduce uh, the Fire Marshal John Zink to give his report. Also. Dear Honorable Mayor and Ron Shaver and City Council, I'd like to thank the City Council for the opportunity to serve as the City's part-time Fire Marshal on behalf of the Fort Morgan Volunteer Fire Department. This is the 2015 year-end report on behalf of the Fire Prevention Bureau and this fire marshal. The Fire Prevention Bureau is responsible for plan review of new buildings and renovation of existing ones. The city plan review process requires the Bureau to respond back on a timeline. Items included are fire hydrant locations, hood systems, fire sprinkler systems, fire alarms, and exit pathways of travel and access to structures for fire equipment. Fire Safety Survey is the inspection program designed to educate the public to current problems that could result in the loss of life, residents, school, and businesses in our community. During October, public education becomes the focus, National Fire Prevention Month. Special requests received from a business for things like fire extinguisher training, classes, and insurance requirements. Attending meetings as needed for various city departments regarding the rules of the International Fire Code adopted by the city, addressing citizens' needs upon request, i.e. smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, and burning trash issues, and it should say, and dozens of more and other emails and, and voicemails when not on duty. This office has completed the following, plan reviews and permit process, four hood systems, and 15 plan reviews, <coughs> fire alarm permits, four schools, two of these became priority during the school needing to reopen by the August deadline. This allowed the contractor and me to do evening and weekend inspections and alarm testing. In conjunction with the Colorado Fire Prevention and Control, 15 inspections and reviews. Here are some of the facilities included, the RE School District, Morgan Community College, Colorado Plains Medical Center, Cargill, daycare centers, and the senior care facilities that are under this jurisdiction. But they have included me when they're in town and I am able to facilitate some of their inspections and we are working well together. Under public education, during the Fire Prevention Week, I and several volunteers from Fort Morgan Volunteer Fire Department visited six schools doing 19 presentations, effectively touching over 1,200 students and teachers. 
The fire department also hosted their semi-annual open house on Saturday, October 10th. There have been 10 fire extinguisher training classes, including both class time and hands-on practical extinguishment. With an estimate of training over 100 plus students for three businesses and the students of the FFA in their high school agricultural shop program. Under fire safety surveys and inspections, roughly 150 inspections <coughs> with a 75% compliance on the initial inspection and an 80 on the first reinspection. I have a goal of 100 by the second reinspection. Under the specialty items, I have been invited to or included in department meetings within the city whenever my assistance is required or needed for water flow issues, safety classes, fire department needs, and contractors' requests for information due to code interpretation. General public concerns, responding to fire alarms as requested, there's been seven. I am contacted by either the fire department or dispatch to respond and assist with the alarm, helping to resolve whether the issue is causing the alarm or to activate it, along with assisting the elderly and disabled citizens with changing smoke detector batteries when there are concerns of falling from a chair or a stool. I've also helped guide the volunteers and business representatives on how to correct the cause of the alarm and getting the business back into compliance for the public wellness and general safety. Signed, John W. Zink, your fire marshal. Thank you, John. Thank you. you do Thank quite you. a bit. I'm trying. Busy boy. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Chief yeah. Frasco, I, you'd like to extend our gratitude and appreciation for what the uh, volunteer firefighters do for the community. Um, would sure appreciate it. I know that they spend a lot of time and put in a lot of hours and, and effort above and beyond, and it, it's very appreciated by myself as well as I think the board and the citizens of the community. Thank you. Your Honor, one other uh, highlight uh, is that with uh, John's assistance, we're having, a, as, as you've noticed around town, there are a lot of building, and he highlighted a lot of different things that he's reviewing. Um, and uh, he works very well with the building department. Uh, obviously, we have a former chief in there, Mike Kirkendall, uh, but that, that coordination works extremely well uh, with all these new building. Uh, new buildings going up and the opportunity to make sure that we're assisting builders. I think uh, John does an exceptional job and of course the fire department as a whole saves us a lot of money uh, because of their volunteer activities. So we really appreciate that, uh, especially on the budget side. So. Presentation of the city manager's state of the city report. I had to pledge your eyes the times. <laughs> so, um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, it's my privilege tonight to talk to you about how things went last year. Uh, and I'm very pleased to report that I think they did, they went very well for the city of Fort Morgan. And I'd like to start out my remarks by saying how fortunate we are to have the employees that work for us. Uh, they do an exceptional job in all the different departments that uh, work for the city. We have a wide array of different professionals that work together as a team to provide the best services for our citizens. I know from time to time we don't always hit the mark, but I'd like to think, and I know, that our, citizens, uh, that our employees are dedicated to making our community a better place. And I want to thank them first and foremost for all that they did last year to make uh, the city of Fort Morgan a better place to live. Um, I would put our employees up against the employees of any other community in the state. Uh, I see them go out of their way to make sure things are done right. Uh, whenever they get a call, they're uh, prompt and try and get there and resolve the issue. Uh, when we don't, uh, I usually get a phone call and uh, we work that out and make sure that everybody's taken care of within the city of Fort Morgan. Um, one of the things that I focused on for the last several years are four priorities uh, that I look at. Then council also has their priorities, but I want to thank you for your support, the priorities that I've set as the city manager. They include 
fiscal accountability, employee development, economic development, and community engagement. And as we go through this report, you'll see how all of those things uh, have come together to really focus staff on the priorities set by City Council and the policy and direction set by City Council to achieve what our community wants and what you have told me needs to happen. So um, before I do that, I want to just give special thanks to the directors. Um, each of the directors, many of them here tonight, do a very good job in making sure that we take uh, what council directs and make it happen. Uh, obviously, I'm the conduit for a lot of that, but without their uh, dedication, a lot of these things would not happen as well. And a special thanks to Chelsea and Sharon who helped put this together and make it look so nice. Um, so uh, on to page two. You didn't bring your, your hourglass tonight, Ron. I was expecting. <laughs> I got a gavel now. <laughs> you got a gavel. <laughs> um, the uh, city of Fort Morgan continues to develop a strong financial position as evidenced in the audited financial statements of 2014. And we see a consistent trend in 2015. While we don't have an audit uh, complete yet, and we hope to have one done hopefully by April and presented to council in May, we see a, a consistent trend in our financial position over the last several years. This is primarily due to the conservative nature uh, of city council in this community and making sure that we are looking at the bottom line and being trying to be sustainable in all of the different activities that we engage in. Um, the general fund, the fund's unassigned fund balance as of December 31st, 2014, the start of uh, 2015 was 13.2 million or 160 percent of the total general fund expenditures. Uh, to put that into context, um, if we had to live off of our rainy day fund, we could. Uh, one of the benefits that the city of Fort Morgan has that not all communities have in the state of Colorado is we've done what's called debruce. Um, that means that we can retain uh, revenues over and above what we take in. Uh, most communities have a rainy day fund limited by Tabor of 3%. And we saw situations in the 2013 flood, the 2015 flood. We've seen situations where we needed to do uh, improvements to assist in development within the community, such as uh, putting together a Coma Avenue so that the middle school could be built. Uh, we see these different things come up and we're able to fund those and make those things happen because of the fund balance that we have. I imagine that our fund balance will be a little bit lower this year based upon some of the hefty projects that we did in 2015. Uh, but overall, uh, we're headed in the right direction to uh, make sure that we are fiscally sound. Um, we retired debt this year uh, as opposed to taking on debt. Uh, and I'll highlight that a little bit later in the report. Um, on page three, there's just kind of an outline of where our money comes from, from different sources. I won't go into that too much, um, but it will, the highlight is that, you know, often the general, the general fund is uh, a small part, about 20% of the overall budget. Um, and I think sometimes we look at increases in sales tax and really the increases in sales tax are a small portion of the overall budget. And while we appreciate increases in sales tax because that assists uh, in most cases to put money in reserves for projects, uh, it represents 50% um, of 20%. Uh, so whatever that is, that's the math uh, teacher here, that's 10%, right? So the 10% of the overall budget. So when we see an increase in 5% in overall sales tax, it's only 5% of 10% of the overall budget. So uh, those are some things to think about uh, when we look at these increases and where that money goes. Because I, I get comments a lot of the time from people in other organizations and in the community that say, boy, you're having all that increase in sales tax. We can do, we can build a community center or we can do something else. And, um, <coughs> It, it doesn't relate to that much money, and I try and tell them, yeah, it's it's a significant increase when you look at dollars, but in the overall picture of the, the operations of the city, it's still not uh, a huge amount of money. Um, going on to uh, page four, um, based upon October numbers of 2015, we're online to come in at 
budget or better for revenues overall throughout the city as well as under budget with expenses uh, by October we should have spent and obtained 83 percent of the overall budgeted numbers and if you look at that we're right on line 83.42 percent of the budget for uh, revenues and only 77.27 percent of expenditure so we're uh, right on line with revenues and under budget for expenses which is a good sign for how 2015 will end up in the audit um, utility rates um, we like to talk about our reasonable utility rates in the city of Fort Morgan but one of the things I really want to stress is that utility rates uh, are directly related to the quality of services that we receive uh, the lights turn on when we turn on the switch the heaters come on when it gets cold the water runs when we're thirsty and the toilets flush we'll leave it at that <laughs> uh, and and all of those things happen uh, with a lot of work and a lot of infrastructure and a lot of expense but for our citizens there's great quality in that because uh, we have not had sewer backups uh, into homes for many years we have a great crew that's out making sure that's taken care of uh, the water system uh, runs very well uh, we have some aged areas that we continue to update but by and far we don't have long-term water outages or boil orders or things like that again I knock on wood because you never know what could happen but overall uh, I see our employees working very hard to make sure that the rates that our citizens pay into utilities <coughs> equals value um, our electric system is uh, constantly being uh, reviewed and looked at to make sure that our infrastructure is up to date uh, as the same with the gas and water and wastewater uh, so as far as increases go uh, in 2015 we did have some electric increases those were necessary due to regulatory issues um, that were putting pressures in the electric market and the wholesale side and I think that we have worked really hard with our wholesale provider to come up with a plan to level those off and in some cases in the city, case of the city of Fort Morgan to start uh, reducing those rates a little bit based upon some rate structures that we've been able to recreate so overall in the next you know over a three-year period we're looking at somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million dollars uh, reduction in what our overall costs are for wholesale electricity uh, from mean and I think that has a lot to do with the dedication of staff working really hard uh, with mean staff and the other members of the mean board to come up with a solution that uh, works well for everyone uh, page five wanted to talk a little bit about debt uh, outstanding debt and future debt um, we do have a little bit of debt related to uh, street sweepers we usually do uh, lease purchase agreements with those uh, there's some there's some tax benefits to the lender and some benefits to us on pricing generally when we do those we also have the same sim or a similar situation with golf carts I don't have those listed here because they're really uh, small in comparison so for example our payments on those debts were about thirty seven thousand dollars in a year whereas you look at our water fund and we're spending about two to two and a half million dollars a year for for debt uh, payments a little bit difference in uh, in magnitude so what I've got listed here are, are large uh, bonds that are outstanding not least the purchase agreements and um, the initial amount that we had borrowed on our water debt was 34 million uh, dollars uh, with the CBT project uh, currently we've uh, got that cut in half um, to 17 million four hundred thirty two five hundred ninety six dollars uh, some of the things that we've done in 2015 to assist with that debt include a refinancing we consolidated a bunch of our bonds refinanced them to shorter terms one of the terms on the bonds went out 40 years uh, they're all 15 year um, payoff at this point and we also got uh, some bond covenants that will help us in future um, bonding opportunities for NISP because uh, we don't have reserve requirements under these new bonds so it's uh, it's going to it's going to help us in the future as we go to build more water projects and that all happened in uh, 2015 another thing that happened in 2015 that's really important with that is we paid off the water wastewater treatment plant 
Our last payment of $750,000 was paid this year. We are now that we own that free and clear at this point. Uh, we're watching. Uh, is it Reg 82? Reg 85. I was almost there. I'll play through. Reg 85, <laughs> which may require us in the next few years to look at some additional capital uh, projects out at the wastewater treatment plant. But we're out of debt on that one. Future debt that we're looking at will primarily be focused on two major projects that Council has identified. That includes the NIST project, Northern Integrated Supply Project, as well as uh, broadband development. Uh, and we're looking at various financing opportunities for those two projects. So now we get to the fun part, the picture. That's, that's my favorite part. Um, so completed projects starting on page six. Uh, you see Linda Street, and, and here's an example of taking money, and, and this was paid in part by the developers and in part by the city based upon our policy that whoever owns the adjoining property has to pay for their portion of the road. Uh, the city owned approximately half of the property that adjoined this road. The developers owned the other half, and so it was split 50-50. But uh, Linda Street paved the way uh, for the construction of Sol Naciente, which is a 49-unit apartment building. Uh, as well as the development of the new Centennial Mental Health Building. And you'll see those under construction or close to completion right now uh, on Linda Street. So we put in some infrastructure and we're getting a, a direct benefit from that infrastructure. And hopefully we can do something with our three acres on the west side of Linda Street to help also promote economic development. Uh, the new runway was built. Uh, golf course entrance road was updated. Uh, I'm going through these fairly quick. If you have any questions, by the way, please feel free to stop me. Uh, Canfield parking lot, which was a very important uh, project for many people um, that frequent the park, was done. Uh, ball fields A and B at Riverside Park were completed. We have a few uh, other um, improvements to put out there. But it, that project was completed based upon FEMA funding, GOCO funding, and insurance proceeds. Um, the city had to put in its matching amount for uh, its portion of different uh, costs, but overall we were able to get that constructed through grants, insurance, and uh, FEMA recovery money. We have a new golf disc golf course, the Pessimist course. I uh, want to thank uh, our Parks Department as well as uh, Josh for helping get make that a reality, it's something that people have been thinking about for a long time and we finally got it done. Uh, the outpost lift station and conversion paved the way for uh, an upgrade in the sewer system and uh, the elimination of a lift station, uh, which uh, has created an opportunity now for a new development, which is the Best Western and Plus that is being constructed there at the old outpost site. So infrastructure also means economic development. Uh, we also had the various streets projects were, that were completed uh, on pages 13 and 14. I like the pictures on 14 and uh, 15 and I think 16 as well that show the previous condition and what the next condition is. If you look at uh, page 16, you'll notice that um, we paved the road right next to the county buildings. Um, so I want to make sure that the county knows that we're putting our road and bridge funds to good use to assist the county. Um, Nancy Street was redone. Um, we updated the I-76 billboard, which had been blown down, uh, went through the permitting process, or at least uh, the permission process for, our, for CDOT to complete that, and we got that taken care of. It's also set up to take different wraps if we decide to buy a wrap to go around it to publicize specific things. Um, thanks to the Upper Platte and Beaver Canal's cooperation, we were able to build a new bridge over the bike and walk path that connects um, the businesses on the north side of I-76 to the park on the south side of I-76 to the park on the north side. And it's actually a very nice bridge. We also built another bridge uh, for Acoma Avenue I want to thank the uh, Fort Morgan Reservoir and Irrigation Company for their cooperation, which allowed us to construct that bridge and, and then connect West Street and Main Street with the new Acoma Avenue. Some ongoing projects, which includes the one I just talked about, 
uh, includes the comprehensive plan. We're underway with that. We'll be giving updates to council. Uh, CDOT phase five is still in planning stages. That would be the repair and update of I-76 and the overpasses as they go uh, next to Fort Morgan. Barlow Road and US 34 intersection is one that's still in the planning processes and are budgeted for coming up, but has been an ongoing project. 2015 flood recovery uh, is an ongoing project. We're hoping to have the Rainbow Bridge rehabilitation uh, portion of, I think that's the 2013 flood, finalized now, hopefully in 2016. Uh, page 25, community events. In the summer, we have uh, the Glenn Miller Swing Fest, usually kicks off the summer. Uh, we have this year, uh, in conjunction with our Live in the Park series, um, our Party in the Park series, where we uh, did three different barbecues, uh, invited the public out, and three or two? Three. 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 Yeah. Uh, which was well attended, and one of the things that came out of those was we circulated um, surveys among the people who visited and got some input about uh, different things that they thought about the community, what their priorities were. This goes back to that goal of, and, and priority of community engagement. We want our citizens to know that we care about them and we want to provide the best services and we want their feedback. What they say matters and we shared those results with council earlier or, or at least last year. Um, we had Bob Stock, which was a huge hit. Lots and lots of people downtown, uh, a lot of fun. For everyone, we had uh, the Fall Harvest Car Show. Um, we had the Utility Week Barbecue, which is always a big hit for everyone. Um, in the winter, we had Christmas Capital of the Plains. Uh, I thought we had the best float. Uh, apparently, it wasn't light enough. Uh, we thought we might have a pretty good vote <laughs> from our councilman, but. He's clearly unbiased when it comes to casting votes, and he went with what he believed was the best. <laughs> Not ours. So um, Christmas Capital Plains was huge. We had Snowzilla, a lot of other attractions, a lot of really positive feedback from the public for that. And we're we're not the major sponsor, but we assist with that through in-kind donations. We also have uh, an opportunity to support our local media. Uh, through purchasing ads to, to basically market the city of Fort Morgan and we work with those media outlets very well to put this on and uh, Media Logic Radio is one of the primary sponsors on that but we get assistance from the Fort Morgan Times as well as Northeast Colorado uh, broadcasting. So we're going to continue with parties in the park. Um, see that on page 32. We think that that was a really good opportunity for uh, city staff, city council uh, to engage the public and um, bring people out to enjoy uh, this, the concert series in the summer. Um, initiatives in 2015 that I think we did well was exceptional customer service, um, safety, economic development, uh, and employee recognition. These were all things that were initiatives we discussed as priorities in the budgeting uh, for 2015 and I detail how we followed through with that. Safety is one that I really like to highlight because this is something that we've been looking at for a couple of years. You've seen the good reports with that, but I, I really have to thank our employees once again for developing a culture of safety within the city of Fort Morgan and working on and developing a culture of exceptional customer service. Those are uh, very important to the city and customer service is one of our citywide goals that we focus on all the time. Um, we had uh, community project service projects uh, where we went and cleaned up a park uh, as city employees and council we had council members come and attend that as well. We went and uh, worked on Optimus Park. Uh, we offered to clean up. Uh, we also helped clean up uh, some uh, a property where somebody wasn't able to clean that up themselves, and we were looking for other opportunities, but. Uh, couldn't find them, uh, but we're very grateful for the employees that came out and demonstrated their pride within our community as part of our efforts to show that um, we all uh, have a responsibility to make sure that the city stays clean and stays nice. 
um, initiatives that we've been working on and moving forward and uh, you'll see next year uh, repaving projects will continue stormwater utility uh, development will continue as well as broadband utility so with that um, the uh, long-range planning of council continues to move forward uh, we'll continue that process on March 8th where we can get feedback on what our current priorities are maybe establish some new priorities and and make sure that we're moving forward in the direction that the citizens and the City Council want uh, some of the pertinent issues that we'll be looking at in finances are water debt and how we make sure we're in a good position financially to take on the debt that will be associated with this project uh, personnel development will be uh, continue to working on exceptional customer service and safety um, economic development we're increasing our involvement in economic development and we'll be working to establish uh, a successful economic development and marketing department within the city uh, in 2016 move, and moving forward um, and we'll continue with community surveys and a lot of that will come out with our comprehensive plan so I uh, want to thank council uh, I had a different picture in here at the end that was a lot less serious uh, I went with the serious picture not sure if everybody would appreciate uh, the picture I surely appreciate and John did you appreciate that picture I, I did like the other one yeah so we, we kind of you know we want to keep that that professional perspective but if you're interested in knowing what that picture was I'll share it with you sometime <laughs> but with that that's my report on 2015 uh, appreciated council support and what we were able to accomplish as you see a lot of big projects and this doesn't begin to um, represent all of the different things that happen on a daily basis where our employees go out and make sure that our community is safe and that we provide valuable value in our utilities and the other services that we provide uh, to the citizens so if you have any questions I don't have a couple comments but okay I'll, I'll, I would just say I think we're very fortunate as a city to have a very solid core group of individuals that work for the city and keep the city's operations going um, we have an exemplary police department volunteer fire department our utilities and enterprise funds as well as all the the uh, general fund departments and entities that take care of the city um, you've amassed a good core of department heads and directors to lead us into the next year and I, I think I kudos go to, to all the city employees and our police department and fire and everybody that keeps us rolling on and safe and low utility rates and keep up the good work thank you anybody else and kudos I think kudos obviously to Jeff for you know riding herd over all of our great employees <laughs> and making I sure that <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Next on the agenda is possible action on the first read or the pub. Next on the agenda is a public hearing on the application for a final plat for the Fife subdivision. Uh, Your Honor, oh, you I missed skipped one, one I? the uh, yep. ordinance on the cable franchise. Yes. Number seven. Um, presentation of the uh, possible action by resolution on the first reading of an ordinance renewing the cable franchise and request to schedule a public hearing on the ordinance for February 2nd if so uh, your honor tonight it would be my recommendation that we table this for another evening uh, due to the fact that um, the representative that was scheduled to be here has uh, become ill and is unable to attend tonight we found out about that uh, about halfway through the day and uh, would like to you know we could proceed with this but I think it would be important or helpful if we had a representative of charter before we did the first reading obviously we'll do a full-blown public hearing at that time I think there may be some people that came tonight to make comments and I think that that would be appropriate and we could put them in the minutes and forward those 
to the charter representative if they wanted to comment on those when they come back, but uh, it would be my recommendation that we table this item and, and if there are people in the audience that came to uh, speak to this could uh, speak tonight so that they won't have to come back on another night. Do we have anybody wishing to address council regarding the cable franchise? Would you sign in, Harry? Mayor Shaver, members of the City Council, staff, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jerry Watson and I live at Hillcrest Apartments. On January or on July the 14th of 2014, I moved into Hillcrest Apartments and I was tickled to death to see a nice TV set there, which I didn't have to share with people in uh, where I used to be for about four months. Um, when I got situated, I looked at the TV schedule and it was on Optimum at that time. Optimum had a lot of things on it that uh, um, none of us knew at Valley View. Number one, I had several music channels. I had a menu. I also had, I believe it was Bloomberg TV or maybe it was Fox Business News and maybe one other channel. And it was fun. It was wonderful to look at and, and dissect. And it was uh, uh, fun listening to some interesting music on the music channels. Then in October, we were notified at a Hillcrest Advisory Board meeting that these uh, uh, charter would be coming in and Optimum would be no longer. Optimum came in, or I mean charter came in, pardon me, and I tell you what, they never said hi, hey, hello, or goodbye, number one. That's fine, I guess, if you're busy. But um, as a result of this, I have, it's been, I've been thoroughly disgusted with it. I've been trying and trying to give it a chance. But I get very disgusted because I like to watch Fox News as well as other channels, but on Fox News, particularly early in the mornings when I'm up, the, it goes on and off, and on and off. And sometimes uh, if um, uh, Bill Hammer is sitting there interviewing and talking, he stops and it goes off and then on and off and on. And this goes all day long. I don't like it. Um, and then last, uh, well, it was last fall, I was watching a special on Fox, which they did, uh, a snippets of all the presidential candidates of both parties, which I found very interesting until it went off. All the cable channels went off that afternoon into next morning. Uh, this is fine and dandy, except we, be, we kept being told it's technical difficulties. And this happened again. <clears throat> and so January 1st, I was watching the Rose Parade. Again, they were on Channel 8. Well, fine, except they were interviewing the uh, uh, commentators on the floats. And again, it was going on and off, and on, and off. Then I was watching the Rose Bowl game and I was getting ready to go to a dinner, that a New Year's uh, Eve, a New Year's Day evening dinner with some friends. And I thought, well, I know a city council meeting is coming up, so I'll turn on channel 191. And I did. 
blank. So it came, we had a snowstorm, we had ice, we had snow, it was miserable, it was cold. So on January the 5th, I decided to stay home. Guess what? Turn on 191 and guess what? Nothing. On, um, before the swearing in, I checked 191 and nothing. Now I want to tell you, I was at I was at the meet and eat program where I volunteer and I made an announcement that the swearing in would be on January the 12th. There were several people down there that wanted to watch it. And I says, good luck, because you won't be able to get it, because I can't get it. I says, are you on charter? Yes. Well, you won't get it. Well, I'm going to tell you, you aren't going to believe the words I heard from those people's mouths. They were not happy. So on, I thought, well, uh, I had a little time before I had to go to some board meetings on the 13th. And I flipped it up, and all of a sudden, there it was. Why is it taking so long to get some of these channels on? Now, this afternoon, I came home from lunch, and I had a rehearsal. When I got back, I flipped on local channels. Guess what? Channel 7, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 20 were blank. So um, I don't know what you can do. I personally, I wish Fort Morgan was big enough to house two franchises to give competition, but we can't. And it takes a long time to get a franchise built, and I understand that. But this is a problem, and I'm telling you right now, personally, this is my own personal opinion, I don't think Charter is very customer oriented. Mm. That's my own opinion. I wish they were, because then they would listen to us. But Charter is okay, but I would rather have Direct or Dish or something else. I mean, Charter is better than nothing, but we've got some problems, we've got to solve them. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. I also got a note from my Dorothy Taylor, and I believe the turning on and turning off is similar to what uh, Mr. Watson was thinking or referring to. So I'll hand this over to John and he can put it in the record. The records. Okay. I think it's a good thing that we're tabling this because I also get people from Gateway. Of course, I worked there for 17 years and lived there for a while. And the reason what Jerry's running into, and I hope Charters comes in to explain themselves, what they did, they did the upgrade to the building, but not inside the building. So it's basically putting new tires on a junk car because the wiring in Gateway or Hillcrest or, or <coughs> any of those type of buildings uh, are the wires that were there since 1976, 78. So, and we did ask them when they were doing that when I worked there, and I, I'll bring this up again when they're here, but um, the manager, Craig Smith, at the time asked them if they were gonna do any work in the inside, and of course he said no, everything's just going from the street to the outside of the building, and from there on it's up to the customer tenant in the building if they wanted to upgrade, and of course, uh, now you're dealing with HUD, and HUD doesn't like people drilling holes in walls and stuff like that, so um, they're still having the same problem Jerry does. Uh, and I think all these um, larger buildings, like uh, probably the same thing with uh, Pioneer Apartments, probably have the same situation. But that's a good thing that we're tailing it, because I do have questions to ask them about that. Comments or? Do we need a motion to table it or? No, I, th I think at this point um, we can just take it off and then it'll come back on uh, when they're ready and can come out. So we'll stay in touch with them. As far as at this point, the public hearing that we were requesting for the second would likely also be postponed to another date after we have that first reading. Next, we'll move on to the public hearing. 
Next on the agenda, we have a public hearing on an application for the final plat for the Fife subdivision. This is a public hearing. Please keep public comments and issues before the council. Uh, each speaker is asked to limit their comments to three minutes unless the speaker represents a group of citizens in which event additional time may be allocated. Please respect these limitations. I reserve the right to limit public comment that is inappropriate under these guidelines and otherwise improper. I also reserve the right to limit testimony and questioning that is repetitive, cumulative, argumentative, and not pertinent to the issues, and to set a limit of and on the duration of testimony if I determine it is necessary in light of the number of persons who have signed up to testify. Legal notice, Mr. Brennan, has it been properly noticed? Yes, Your Honor, uh, legal notice of this public hearing appeared in the Fort Morgan Times on January 5th. Uh, presentation of the application, Mr. Curtis. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this was brought to you in the pre preliminary plat stage a few weeks ago. Um, nothing substantially is completed. As you recall, this major subdivision process involves public rights away and its adjustments to the right-of-way on Barlow Road north of I-76 in conjunction with uh, also removing those easements and portions of city property that were related to the outpost lift station um, that are no longer there uh, due to the uh, construction project. Um, this is the last stage um, subject to your approval. Um, at which time it would get sign uh, signed off on and recorded with the county. Um, we had no additional uh, comments from Planning Commission, uh, nor from staff that was received in my office. And staff recommends that council approve this case uh, for final plat of the two and a half acres to replay, uh, to replat the pipe site subdivision and include the additional right-of-way and an easement vacation as recommended by Planning Commission at their public hearing on January 11th. Council, have any questions for Mr. Curtis? Next is comments from the applicant. They're not here. We're acting as their representative on this matter. Next, we'll hear from the public. If anybody wishes to speak on this issue. Seeing none. Public comments, written or oral, Mr. Brennan? Not through my office, Your Honor. Comments from the council? <coughs> Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Your Honor, I make a motion to close the public hearing. I have a motion by Christine Casto. Second. A second by Lisa Northrup. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Close the public hearing. Council action, Mr. Myers. So this is a quasi-judicial function. City Council is sitting as more or less the judge in the situation. So. Um, Based on the evidence that's been provided, if the City Council feels that that evidence is sufficient to establish um, the requirements of the code, then you should approve the, um, the plat. If you feel that it hasn't, you have a couple options. You can ask for additional information or you can deny. I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I would offer a resolution approving case number 15-016 SD final plat for a major subdivision for a final plat of 2.5 acres more or less to replat the Fife, the Pife subdivision to include additional right of way and an easement vacation as was recommended by the Planning Commission at a public hearing held on January 11, 2016. Second. I have a resolution by Lisa Northrup, a second by Christine Casto. Vote by roll call. 
That resolution carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Next on the agenda is presentation of possible action on the purchase of two police vehicles, <coughs> code enforcement vehicle, Lieutenant Crone. At this time, Your Honor, I need to recruit myself from this bidding process. Because the company I work for did put a bid in. Mayor Council, I'm here this evening to uh, discuss the purchase of two police patrol vehicles and a code enforcement vehicle. <clears throat> um, the, the police department has an ongoing program where we look at uh, vehicles based on scheduled maintenance, um, any uh, operating issues or repair expenses that uh, we go through the, the typical year with. And uh, this year we're looking at, uh, again, three different vehicles, two of which are um, 2004 and a 2005 Ford Crown Victoria and also a 2006 um, Ford pickup that uh, all of them are estimated about 93,000 miles when it actually end up getting replaced later on this year. <clears throat> um, funding source is uh, based on obviously taxes and um, according to the bids that we received, which were, there were several from <clears throat> uh, different bidders for the uh, patrol vehicle to include the actual code enforcement vehicles, all of which, whichever one we actually chose would still fall within budget. <clears throat> I'd recommend that uh, purchasing the two Ford police interceptors, which is similar to what we purchased last year. The three major considerations um, for these types of vehicles that we've noticed in the last year have been the benefits of traction because they're all, they are all wheel drive vehicles, especially on the snowy and ice. And more recently with the snowstorms we've had, it's made a world of difference. Um, also the ergonomics of the vehicle, which is much improvement over the other vehicles that we've had, Crown Victorias or even the Dodge Chargers. And also one of the other <clears throat> key things is the uh, field of view in these utility vehicles are much better than any other car that I've actually driven in as well. The staff um, would recommend purchasing an F Ford, um, I'm sorry, Ford F-150 for the code enforcement vehicle. Um, we had uh, we have a similar one right now and haven't had any issues with that. And one of the other key things with when we purchase these pickups that we put on a topper, the current topper that we have was replaced in 2010 due to hail damage. That topper will fit into one of the new vehicles. The concern is if we look at any other type of vehicle, whether it be a Chevy, GMC, or I can't remember what the other uh, bid we have, that that topper wouldn't fit. Toppers run anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000. So kind of evens out depending on the price of the vehicles. The Fords happen to be just a tiny bit more, but kind of would even out regardless of what we ended up with. <coughs> I would also recommend that the uh, council accept a bid from Spradley Bar of Greeley for the purchase of two Ford Intercept utilities. They were the cheapest by approximately $300 compared to the other bidder. Um, also, I would recommend the council accept the bid of Spradley Bar in Fort Collins for the purchase of a Ford F-150. That was a couple hundred dollars than closest um, bid as well. That's all I've got for now. And the two interceptor units you're replacing have 93,000 miles on them, roughly? Yeah, uh, typically... And by the time we get the purchases made and we set up uh, the plan to get them upfitted, it's usually anywhere between um, June and August. So we've still got several months. Could run anywhere between 500, 900 miles a month. So we try and kind of figure that on average. Those are all in town miles. That's that's correct, yeah. Yeah, which are tougher on vehicles. They seem to be. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Council have any questions of Lieutenant Crown? Seeing none, I would entertain action by resolution. Your Honor, I would offer a resolution to accept the bid from Spradley Bar, Ford, and Greeley to purchase two Ford Interceptor utilities for a total of $54,058 and a bid from Spradley Bar, Ford, and Fort Collins to purchase at a Ford F-150 pickup for a total of $23,675, all which remain within budget. Second. I have a resolution by Christine Custo and a second by Kevin Lundell. <coughs> Roll, 
vote by roll call. <coughs> that resolution carries on a vote of six to zero with council member Segura having stepped down. Thank you. Thank you. We have approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor. Tonight's consent agenda includes item A, approval of disbursements and payroll for December 2015, and item B, approval of the minutes of the January 12, 2015, 2016 City Council special meeting. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered routine business by the council and will be enacted with a single motion and a single vote by roll call. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is deemed necessary, that item should be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. I would entertain action. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Any corrections? Your Honor, I would offer a resolution on the consent agenda for the payroll of December 2015 and for the minutes of the January 12th <coughs> Council special meeting. Second. I have a motion by Christine Casto and a second by Lisa Northrup. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. Next we have public comment and audience participation. Anybody in the audience wish to address council? Seeing none, we will move on to reports by officials and staff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you're finding missing from your packet tonight a report from all the various departments. We are working on a consolidated report that hopefully we'll have uh, when I say consolidated, it is a consolidated report, but we're trying to find a new format that's a little more user-friendly uh, and provide facts that and information that will be consistent over a period of time. Um, one of the things that we want to do is make it useful as well as brief. Uh, we initially consolidated everything down so we could get away from 25 to 30 pages of, uh, well, one for every department essentially, so about 25 different reports. Uh, on separate pages. We've consolidated that. Even with that information, we're about 19 or 20 pages. So we're trying to figure out how to consolidate the information, make it useful for council. Um, I'll continue to get the reports to make sure uh, I'm getting feedback from uh, all the different department uh, heads on what's going on, but we're just trying to figure out uh, what would work well on information. So the next report you get, if there's additional information that you would like to have included in that, please let me know and we will uh, change the report so that it will meet council's expectations and requirements. Um, with that, we have a lot of different projects going on uh, in the city right now. You saw some of the finish, uh, finishing up projects uh, that are carried over from 2015. Um, we're getting ready to roll out projects moving forward. We've got a lot of RFPs and bids that are being worked on and uh, we'll be moving those things out to continue to move forward with the various projects and long-term goals of City Council. Um, so if you have any questions about those, uh, definitely fill you in on those. With that, I know that we had some of the directors that had some reports that they wanted to make. So I'll turn it over to the directors that had some reports. Um, good evening, I had a couple of things. Um, yesterday, I wanted to reach out and just let you guys know, we did have a small gas leak over in the northwest portion of town. and thanks to a very observant citizen that called in and reported the fact that they smelt gas and everything, and then a follow-up phone call from the city manager that he smelt it in the same neighborhood. We were able to go over, find the leak, and fix it. Um, it was one of those situations that it was good that it was found when we did. So um, I applaud the efforts of my gas department for getting out there and getting that taken care of in a very safe manner yesterday. Um, on another issue, last year the, through the water department, we purchased a piece of ground surrounding the water treatment plant. 
Um, as part of that effort, we acknowledged that we did not want to retain ownership of the farmhouse that was attached to that piece of ground. We have now officially separated that into a 15 acre parcel and are putting that up for sale. Um, we are just using a bid process where people can bid on it and all those documents are found on the city website. So we just wanted to make the council aware that we're moving forward with that in guidance with the changes of, that were made in the sale of property um, procurement issues last year. So, so if anybody wants to buy a 15 acre farmhouse out by the water treatment plant, we've got one out there for sale now and we're gonna move forward trying to get that advertised and, and see if we can get it sold because my guys like treating water and taking care of a treatment plant. They don't like taking care of a old farmhouse and <laughs> the surrounding property. So, but we retained all the remaining property that would be available for us to expand the water treatment facility. And so we're just, we're just alleviating the 15 acres in the house that's out there. So okay. all that information's on the, our website. Yep. All that information on the sale, that property is on the website. How's the neighborhood? Neighborhood's very quiet, <laughs> very quiet. Just a lot of water noise. Small noises. reservoir, yeah, right behind the hill. And <laughs> so, <clears throat> thank you. Thanks. Are there any other reports? We will be having uh, the all city meeting on Friday and council's invited to come to that as well. So I think that's all that we've got. Bids, meetings, and announcement, Ms. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor. As uh, Jeff mentioned, it's that time of year, so there are a number of bids and RFPs out. The city is accepting bids for the following. Water main line insta valves until 2.45 p.m. on January 20th. Census water meters until 2.45 p.m. on January 20th. ITRON 100W water encoder receiver transmitters until 2.45 p.m. on January 20th. Fire hydrants, water valves, and pipe until 2.45 p.m. on January 20th. Electrical conductors until 2.45 p.m. on January 21st. Electric distribution wood poles until 3 p.m. on January 21st. A four-wheel drive, three-quarter ton pickup until 3.45 p.m. on January 26th. A four-wheel drive, three-quarter ton pickup until 3.45 p.m. on January 26th. A four-wheel drive, three-quarter ton pickup until 3.45 p.m. on January 26th. And a four-wheel drive, three-quarter ton by fuel pickup CNG <coughs> until 3.45 p.m. on January 26th. Also posted today was the uh, request for proposals for the sale of real property owned by the city of Fort Morgan, which Brent just uh, reviewed with you. Under meetings, the all city meeting is uh, this Friday the 22nd at 3.30 p.m. in the electric department shop. Uh, the public should be aware most city offices are going to close at about 3 p.m. So employees will be able to attend that meeting. On January 25th, the library board will meet at 4.30 p.m. in the community room. On January 25th at 4.30 p.m., the Planning Commission will meet here at City Hall. The, on January 28th, the Museum Heritage Foundation will meet at 4 p.m. in the community room. And the next City Council regular meeting is February 2nd at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Wow. <laughs> Are there any other announcements from Council? We have an executive session for determining position. Do we need, just need to vote to go into executive yeah, session? Yes, yeah, so, so looking for a motion. I would entertain a motion to go into the executive session. Your Honor, I would offer a motion to go into executive session to discuss water purchases. Second. I have a motion by Christine Castell and a second by Dan Mailer. Mayor, Mailer, Marler. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We will adjourn and go to executive session.